4 o'clock. Is everyone set? We're set. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar for today. My name is Drew Gertis. I'm Early Childhood Director at Messiah Lutheran in Bolden Spring. I also serve on the NLSA Executive Committee, and I have the pleasure of doing our introduction for today's webinar, which will feature a best practice in place at Christ Lutheran School in Phoenix, Arizona. This webinar was prepared by our friends at Christ, and is being produced by Concordia University, Wisconsin's Office of Continuing and Distance Education. We certainly thank our friends at Concordia for their leadership and support in this endeavor. Just a couple notes before we begin our webinar. Last week, Christ uh, Lutheran and Phoenix did an amazing webinar on school service projects. Some of you may have been unable to participate in the webinar due to the LEA convocation, but we remind you that it is all posted on the Lutheran School portal. All webinars are archived there. Um, this is also the last webinar today, which is hosted by Christ. Our next webinar will actually take place on November 12th and will be hosted by Trinity uh, Early Childhood Center in Clinton Township, Michigan. All of our live webinars are participatory events. We appreciate your questions and comments. Feel free to express yourself by typing in the chat box in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. All of the webinars presented this year are available on demand on the login page of the Lutheran School Portal. You need not be a portal member to view them. If you like what was shared today, we invite you to record or to view a recorded webinar together with your faculty. Another great resource of Lutheran Schools is the LCMS School Ministry Facebook page. Our Facebook page provides another opportunity for our schools to connect informally. We invite you to share your encouraging stories on the LCMS School Ministry Facebook page. In just a minute, I'll turn it over to Bill Hodson, but I'd like to start with a short prayer, so if everyone would join me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to learn something new from our friends at Christ Lutheran in Phoenix. Continue to bless the children, families, faculty, and staff at Christ as they march forward and do amazing ministry. Be with all of us, too, as we participate and think of new ideas that we can implement in our own ministry setting. In your name we pray. Amen. I'd like to turn it over to Bill Hodson from Christ and enjoy the webinar for today. Good afternoon, everyone from Phoenix. I'd like to read the quote that's on the, the screen right now from Acts chapter 1, verse 8. That's the theme for our school year. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And I'm assuming the Holy Spirit was telling St. Luke that that includes most junior high school classrooms as well and their occupants. Hello again, my name is Bill Hodson, and I am in my 42nd year of teaching junior high school, all of it right here at Christ Lutheran School. I have taught everything, uh, theology, English, uh, religion, uh, literature, second grade music, kindergarten PE, all kinds of things. And this particular webinar, however, deals with a, a topic near and dear to my heart, and that's the junior high advisory program that we have here at Christ Lutheran. And we do take that very seriously what our Lord said in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. And as a junior high staff, we're always looking for ways to help our children, these young adults, to be better students, children, citizens, and indeed missionaries of the gospel. We believe it is a mission possible. So that's how our advisory program came to be. And any of us who are listening who have been teachers for 42 years or even for one month have all heard an expert describe the latest and greatest educational program as the best thing since sliced bread. Well, it was no different in 2009 when we listened to a presenter talk about junior high advisory. There were three or four of us present for that session. And after the, the presentation, we met out in the lobby of the hotel, wherever we were, and again, the big question was, if this is the best thing since sliced bread, why doesn't every school in that man's district have an advisory program? Well, we talked about it further on the way home from conference and throughout the next weeks, and we thought, you know, it really was a good idea. So our staff took the information from that workshop that we attended, and we studied it for almost an entire year. We didn't actually institute it until the second semester of the following year. And we, we realized that 
there's really probably no other grade level where stress plays such an important part in understanding what students are going through than the typical 12 to 15 year old young adult. And, you know, it's no different at Christ Lutheran School here in Phoenix. So we spent time analyzing why this is so, and we came up with a number of factors in, in our discussions. First of all, we at Christ Lutheran receive a large number of transfer students from public, private, and parochial elementary schools in our city who want to come to Christ Lutheran School. And they come here because we hope, because we share the gospel of Jesus Christ, but we know many times it's because we offer a strong academic program that are going to get students into, into the particular high school they would like to. Well, what that creates then is a group of students who are unaware of the amount of work that's required of them each and every day and including homework. And these transfer students we found, well, they're not only adjusting to the changes in themselves, but they also now have to deal with a new campus and with new friends, adjusting to a whole new setting. Now, add into that mix the fact that they're going to have a large number of teachers in a departmentalized situation with varying expectations, and you're going to have an extremely high stress level. And the high expectations also for getting into the right high school in their mind proves stressful. The fact that there's a, a strong curriculum academically, spiritually, physically. And, you know, they get to the point sometimes, and we've probably all seen this who teach junior high, sometimes they just get tired of being called young adults when on that particular day they feel more like a kid. Well, you put all that together and you could have disaster. But what we found, too, is not all of these changes are necessarily negative. We wanted to promote the idea that junior high brings a lot of positive changes as well, new opportunities, new challenges, new privileges, new extracurricular activities. Indeed, it's a fresh start. And for many of our transfer students, that's exactly what they're looking for. We saw this advisory program that we witnessed at the workshop in 2009 as really a, well, it's a great way to ensure student success, basically not only at our school for the two years that we have them, but as they prepare to enter high school, whether that high school is a public, private, or parochial high school. And the advisory program really was an avenue to receive, to, excuse me, relieve the stress of all the changes in their lives. So we focus first on the stress, and we asked, how will advisory help in that regard? We knew we could design a program that would assist students in the transition from lower grades to junior high, and advisory would help us do that in a number of ways. It allows an advisor to mentor and minister to students almost in a one-on-one -on -one situation rather than having 25 students that you deal with in one class and then another 25 in another class and so on, you have a small group of students that you see really for two years to help them in this transition. It would facilitate, we knew, better communication between school and parent, and you're going to hear more about that in what was the dreaded online grading. And it also then fosters accountability. No more of the, why didn't you tell me they were doing that or not doing that? So as we prepare students for high school, the advisory program, what provides a forum for student self-discovery and understanding of oneself. So those are the reasons we started. And a big part of that is up on the screen now, and we've talked about it many times, and it's a personal favorite of mine, and that's uh, the personality test that compares people to golden retrievers, otters, lions, and beavers. I have a, a, a personal story in that regard in that obviously principals are probably lions. They are the ones in control. And unfortunately, I am the most dangerous of them. I am an otter with lion tendencies. I want to be in charge. I just can't get it together to be in charge. So once the principal and I discovered the strengths that I have in being serendipitous and the party person, 
And he being the leader at that particular time, it really made our relationship uh, much easier. And also we've discovered that every otter needs a beaver, and that's why I married my wife. But that's another webinar entirely. Um, I, you're going to hear more about that. We talked about it last week, and what we found as we do this personality test with students, that it's the same in the classroom, and the advisory helps students to recognize that. So what I'd like to do now is turn it over to Chuck Tassler, who teaches science and theology in junior high and is going to discuss the role of that person who leads this advisory group. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. At Christ Lutheran School, one of our most important ministries is in building relationships with our students. And together with our church, we work hard to develop ways in which we can minister to our students and to their families. One of the many ways we do this is through our junior high advisory program. The difficulty at Christ Lutheran School is that our junior high averages between 130 and 140 students in 7th and 8th grade, with approximately 20 to 25 new students joining us every year in 6th grade. Due to our large numbers, it provides us with many challenges, but at the same time, it gives us the unique opportunity to develop strong relationships with a large number of our students from our community. Since we have so many students who are new to our school as sixth graders, we felt it was necessary to work with a smaller group of kids on a weekly basis. Therefore, we divided our seventh and eighth grade students into groups of 12 to 14. With only five to six homeroom teachers, we also needed to recruit a few of our special teachers, such as our computer and music teachers, and also a few of our office staff to serve as advisors. As the advisor, we act in many roles, and all of these roles are designed to help our students. We truly want our students to feel as though they have a support network in place to help them in many different ways, not just on the academic side, but as the students begin to think about high school, they also need to learn the many aspects of school that they must manage. As advisors, we are there to help them monitor their academic progress and provide guidance, but also to support them may it be necessary, such, such as helping the students develop, develop long-term planning skills and organization for after an absence. One of our goals is for the student to learn self-advocacy so that they may be proactive in their learning and progress. As a junior high staff, we began, began to notice that many students lacked basic skills, especially those coming in from other schools. To help bridge the gap, we developed some whole group instructional strategies designed to help the student in organization, goal setting, study skills, note taking, and test taking. Many of these skills are taught early in the school year as to help them create a set of study skills that they can use and develop throughout the year and into the future. With these skills in place early in junior high, the students can develop and tweak their study skills so that they can fall back on those skills when new challenges arrive in high school where many new stressors and challenges will arise. Although meeting the needs of the whole group is important, the individual is still the main focus of the advisory program. We meet with each of our advisees weekly to mentor and monitor their academic, social, emotional, and spiritual needs, as well as going through their academic progress through our online gradebook program called GradeLink. Along with communicating with the individual students, it is important that we as advisors are advocates for our students leading, directing, and guiding them through these many stressful and challenging days of junior high is of high importance. More importantly, it lets the student know that someone has their back and supports them. We have learned that as the advisor, it allows us to be a liaison between parents and the entire junior high staff in communicating information from parent to school and from school to parent. The advisor stays in contact with the family frequently during each quarter to see how things are going. As I mentioned earlier, de developing the relationship with a student and their parents is a critical piece to the success of the student, but also to the advisory program. As we continue our, continue our presentation, I would like to introduce Ms. Jennifer Weber, our 7th and 8th grade history teacher, and currently she is our advisory coordinator. She'll discuss some of our advisory programs in action. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Weber. I've been teaching for 17 years. This is my 15th year at Christ Lutheran. 
and I am the advisory coordinator. I've been in this position for three years now. So my job during this webinar is to really point out the details of how to set up a program and how the program runs. And so before the school year begins, students are divided into their advisory groups. Students remain with their advisor for both years of junior high school at CLS. This provides a great opportunity for the advisors to develop a relationship with the students and their families. The advisors also can see the growth over the two years. I can tell you there is tremendous growth from the seventh grade first conference to the eighth grade exit conference. In the junior high class schedule, there's a class called advisory. It's during this time that all of the groups meet. The class period is about 45 minutes in length. The students also tend to group in their advisory groups for study halls and for homeroom, except, of course, for our two advisory groups that are led by our office staff. When we began the program, each junior high teacher was in charge of three lessons. This proved to be very challenging. So that's when we decided to have one person coordinate the lessons. This person, happens to be me at this point, writes the lessons and creates a scope and sequence of topics. The lessons are based on two resource books. Each advisor has a copy of these books, Learning to Learn by Gloria Fender and Soar by Susan Kruger. These books provide consistent resources to use within the advising sessions. They include such topics as learning styles, time management, organizational skills, note-taking skills, and test-taking skills. Team building is a big part of our program. We want our 7th and 8th graders to know each other and create a family unit within the advisory groups. In August, the junior high and the advisors go to an outdoor ed type trip. This year, the trip was to the Grand Canyon and then to a high ropes course. Then, upon return, the advisory groups met, conducted a number of icebreakers and team building tasks. Throughout the year, the people in each advisory group get to know each other quite well. And we celebrate at the end of the year with an advisory group volleyball tournament. We use giant beach volleyballs, which help take some of the fear of failure away, and it proves to be a very fun event for all. Once the team building activities have been co completed in August, the remaining August advisory meeting sessions are spent completing student surveys and self-assessments. Students gain a clearer understanding of who they are and what that means. They discover their strengths and weaknesses, how to address the weaknesses, and how to communicate more effectively with others who are different. For example, students discover if they're a left brain or right brain learner. They also find if they are auditory, visual, or a kinesthetic learner. And of course, as Bill Hodson talked about, they learn their personality profile, if they're an otter, a golden retriever, beaver, or a lion. Finally, they do take a love languages survey, which shows how they respond, what's the preferred way of receiving affirmation. And that is a very informative survey that especially their parents enjoy hearing about during the student conferences. Students also learn about their teachers' personality profiles. This is very important. The teachers in the junior high who are lion personalities can sometimes come across a little bit scary to some junior high students. So it is important for the students to understand which teachers are the lion personalities and understand how and why we as teachers respond the way that we do. We emphasize that this is how God made us. We're all unique, and it's a great time for us to discuss God's gifts and how we all do not have the same gifts. For some students, it takes them a while to accept that this is how God really did make them. They want to study the same way that their friends study, even if it's not a, a method that 
best matches their learning style. More frequently, we see that students finally understand why certain people react in certain ways. For example, in my advisory group this year, one girl who realized that she's a golden retriever personality, thus being a very loyal friend, but can be quite sensitive, she realized that her feelings were being hurt, and it wasn't that her best friend was being mean, it was simply that her friend, who is a lion personality, was saying things in a way that this girl was filtering as being aggressive. So the two friends learned how to communicate more effectively. After the personality and learning style profiles, we move on to goal setting. Goal setting is an essential part of the program. All students write goals for the quarter, for the year, and one do hard things goal based on the book, which is a seventh grade summer reading assignment. Each year, it's a challenge for the advisors to make certain that the students are writing good goals. These goals need to be specific, achievable, and measurable. Too often we see, I want to do well. That is not a good goal. And so we talk through this in great detail until we refine it that they are specific, achievable, and measurable. The goal sheets are then signed by students, parents, and the advisors. These sheets are reevaluated at the end of each quarter and looked to and re referenced throughout the year. Now let's look at each quarter. As you can see, each quarter has a specific focus. The first quarter focus is on self-discovery with the personality types and learning styles as well as goal setting. This quarter ends with the first student-led conference. The second quarter looks at addressing the areas of struggle or challenge for the student. What's working, what isn't, and why? Third quarter begins with a reflection on the first semester. Did the student meet the goals? Why or why not? We also look at stress management and time management, since the third quarter is usually the most intense academically. This quarter also ends with a student-led conference. Fourth quarter is a more fluid quarter. Some years we've done exploratory classes. Advisors choose a class that they wish to teach, and all of the groups rotate through the classes. For example, we've offered anything from cooking to interviewing skills, to first aid. Last year, we tried something different. We had a Christian living and purity class, which met six of the sessions. This is led by an outside group. If we take a look at the first quarter in more detail, you can see each week has a specific topic. There are times when one group may get behind in a lesson due to a substitute situation or if there's a change in schedule, the advisors understand that they can push a lesson to the next week if needed. It is just expected that by the time we get to the practice conferences that everyone will have had the same lessons. As you can see, conference practice takes two full weeks. We have the students practice using their folders and practice giving their presentation to others in the same group. You'll hear more about conferences later. Each advisory meeting is about 45 minutes in length. The lesson is meant to take only 10 to 15 minutes. Sometimes there are questionnaires or tasks for a student to complete. In this sample lesson that you can see, the students complete a worksheet called, What Are My Priorities? After the teacher gives the main presentation, the students work on this worksheet while the advisor meets with each student individually to discuss their grades. Advisors ask about missing work, point out trends, if grades are going up or down. Student, students may also take this time to complete makeup work or absent work. At the very beginning of the, of the quarter, each student receives a folder in which they put their name and a table of contents. This becomes their portfolio, and it's kept with the advisor. This way, the portfolio can be referenced throughout the advisory conference meetings, and it also cannot be lost before the student-led conference. 
each portfolio has, as I mentioned before, a table of contents. It also contains samples of work. About three weeks before the student-led conferences, teachers email a list of items that they want to have in the portfolios to the advisory coordinator. Then a master list is compiled and handed out to the students. Students then have a few weeks' time to collect the work samples and organize them. Finally, the students fill out their table of contents based on the items selected. So for example, for history class, students may have been asked to have two examples of assignments, two quizzes, and two tests. It's up to the students to choose which of those items they wish to, to pull and put into their folder. Portfolios become quite large by conference time. They contain not just the work samples, but also their goal sheet, and for the first quarter, all of those various learning style surveys. These portfolios are referred to throughout the student-led conference. Then the students take it home, and the process starts over again. At this time, I'm going to hand the phone back to Chuck Tassler, who's going to discuss in detail the student-led conference. Once the portfolios are, portfolios are ready, all the work has been collected and goals have been set, and the students have gone through their two weeks of practice sessions, it is time for the student-led conference. Personally, this is one of my favorite parts of the advisory program because I am able to see all the work of the students come together in a very unique and special presentation by each student. As a staff, we have decided to have our 15-minute student-led conferences twice a year in October and in March which coincides with the end of our first and third quarters. This would enable us to see progress during the first quarter, but then also to create goals that look toward the future as the conference in March approaches. The student prepares a set of note cards that correspond to items on their agenda, which they will present to their parents in the conference. The cards allow the student to reference them during the conference as they develop their public speaking skills eye contact and presenting information in a logical and systematic way. As the student begin, begins their conference in prayer, the students give their parents a brief snapshot of themselves. This snapshot, snapshot includes some of the items they have learned about in their left and right brain assessments, their personality styles, and also their preferred learning styles. Going through these different assessments provides the opportunity for the student to show their parents all that they have learned about themselves, but also some of the strategies that they have learned to use in school and out of school to help them be successful as a student. They see their child in giving this presentation allows the parents to the opportunity to see their child share with them what they are beginning to learn or understand about themselves. While students are presenting their conference, they are not only developing some very necessary communication skills, but also skills that will help them in the future as they are in the workplace. At this time, we would like to share a short video from a parent about what he sees the value of these conferences are in the business world. Would you please show the video entitled Business World? I commented earlier about uh, from a business perspective I'm with Cushman and Wakefield. We have about 16,000 employees, and a regular practice of upper management is to pay uh, for uh, uh, sessions, visiting sessions, and um, sessions where employees are able to be coached uh, in terms of giving presentations and leading a presentation, and where uh, employees uh, are better able to understand uh, their special gifts and uh, that, is, that was something that appeared very evident to me, that Kelly was, was in the process of formulating her own ideas and her own identity, and that is just something that in the business world is um, just very important and something that uh, many businesses actually pay for uh, to help people uh, with. Students are then asked to share their report cards and talk about each class and their successes and difficulties and their own strength and weaknesses as it relates to their learning. Going through the report card brings the advisory conference full circle 
since one of our goals is to help the student be successful and also come to a greater understanding of oneself. Understanding their strengths and weaknesses allows for the student to establish goals for the quarter and for the school year. Setting goals is sometimes one of the most difficult parts for the student because students have never sat down to think about what they would like to achieve. Helping the student to understand that setting goals is an important method of learning to challenge themselves and to learn to stretch themselves a little further than what they are used to normally. Setting goals also holds the student accountable to their parents and their advisor as they all hear it directly from the student. The student shares different strategies they will use to accomplish their goals with their parents and as the pre presentation finishes, the parents are given the opportunity to make comments, ask questions, give feedback, and provide encouragement and support to their child and foster their relationship with them. We have a short video showing one of our current students presenting parts of her conference to her mother. Would you please play the video entitled, The Conference? So we're going to pray. Dear God, please, please help us have a nice day today and a great meeting. Um, please help me with the ITBS testing, and please help my mom with her work. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to go through the snapshot of me. So, right here it says that I'm a peacock and a koala, so that means that um, I am like fun and sometimes like loud, I guess. Um, and then I tend to be social and quiet when I need to be. And my love languages are words of affirmation and quality time. So for my school performance, This is my church, um, my church attendance. So we've only missed three weeks, so that's... Mm -hmm. And my school attendance, I've been here every single day, but I've been tardy once, and that was when I got my braces up. Okay. So that's good. And my attitude and behavior. So efforts, I'm going to give myself like a one out of five. So efforts to achieve a five. Uh, appropriate conduct, five. Courtesy, five. Efficient use of time, four. Very good. Or, or maybe three sometimes. So, my academic work. So, this is one of my science tests, and I got um, minus nine. And that was the, I think this was our first test. Our key people quiz for history. Got minus two, but I didn't know what the bonus question was. Oh, do you know? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had a word, and we had to tell her if it's Greek or Latin. We have to tell her the definition of the word. Um, so my improvement is I need to improve my math skills and my reading. And then... Um, my goal sheet is are like um, no one completes and no tardies. Um, I got tardy once already. And that um, some of the ways to support my goals are like skipping my like my after school activities if I need to. Mm -hmm. um, and what you guys can do to help me with that is like make sure I have a good place to study. Very good. Okay. What are your goals on grades? Um, to get like two B's and the rest A's. Um, so what, what subjects you said math and science and then also I know you've had a couple of history quizzes you've, lately. Have you felt that they've gone well? Kind of. Kind of. So that's an opportunity to maybe study a little bit more in advance, not waiting until the night before. Prioritizing, kind of what you said about organizing, and you do a great job of that. I think these grades are wonderful, so... But we'll do whatever we can to help you reach your goal, that's for sure. 
Turn your TV off, maybe? <laughs> I don't like that. Yes. Get your siblings to turn the TV off. <laughs> As teachers, we always want to have goals or objectives that our students achieve in the classroom. Our advisory program is no different. We have outcomes that we hope each student will achieve throughout the program and also during the conference. We want our students to demonstrate an understanding of themselves with respect to their learning, taking into consideration their own strengths and weaknesses, and be able to communicate them with others. This personal understanding helps them to develop ways in which they can manage and be successful in the day-to-day -day work in junior high. The parents are also able to hear the possible methods the students will utilize in each class. One of the main goals of the student-led conference is for the parents to hear directly from their child about their daily school life. In the normal parent-teacher conference, the teacher shares their perspectives about the student and the parent will give feedback to the teacher to help the teacher work with the student in class. In the student-led conference, the student is able to reflect on their school day and provide the parents with a glimpse of some of the struggles, challenges, successes of each day and how school is going for them. The student communicates with the parent ways that they might better assist them to promote success outside of school. And through the entire process, the student is developing their own public speaking voice and important communication skills that will allow them to present information share feelings, attitudes, emotions, and challenges in a safe and supportive atmosphere. I would like to introduce Mrs. Christy Rowe, our eighth grade English and literature teacher, who will discuss a few of the post-conference items that we do with our advisees here at Christ Lutheran School. Good afternoon. Um, thanks for tuning in and listening to us. And uh, as mentioned, my name is Christy Rowe, and we just welcome you to our program. Uh, after our conferences, the student is asked to write an evaluation about their experience. We have a sheet that we've designed for them to fill out and reflect on how the conference went. And the first question on the questionnaire asks the student to address whether they, in fact, met their first quarter goals. And the final question, similarly, asks if they have any new goals uh, for the new quarter. But aside from these two goal questions, the questionnaire is really designed um, to elicit thinking about the conference experience itself. So we're not just talking right now about the advisory, but we're talking about specifically about the conference. The questions require the student to evaluate the strengths of their presentation and the areas where they think they'd like to improve for their next conference, which would most likely be in the spring. Also, we ask the student to share what they learned from their parents in the conference and like, likewise what their parents might have learned from or about them during the conference. And I think this is a really important facet of their reflection because often there can be very positive exchanges between the parent and the student during the conference. And we believe by having the student actually take the time to write it out that this helps to solidify um, the student recall of the events. As a matter of fact, uh, just last Thursday we had our fall conferences and on Friday we met in our advisory groups and did this very activity, which by the way we have another a number of um, these handouts uploaded as attachments, so you'll be able to access all of this in case you're interested in this program. Um, but in the course of our advisory last week, I, I was meeting with a student and her mother, and the student um, shared that one of her goals was to compare herself less to others and to really just evaluate who she is as a child of God, not to always be looking around at others. And her, her mother was really praising her for that because apparently this had been a conversation they had had at home, which I hadn't been privy to. Um, so the next day when we met in our advisory groups, our advisory class on Friday afternoon, I mentioned to the student this particular exchange to remind her of it. And I said, now, you know, please make sure to write this down because this is something worth remembering about who you are and, and how your mother affirmed you. So that was just a really wonderful exchange that happened. As a final aside, um, each advisor we have found through the years has really tailored the advisory experience to his or her own preferences as well. And so although this is not a formal part of our process, I make sure during my advisory that I'm taking notes um, 
about the student and how they're how they're presenting themselves. And then the next day, as we did last Friday, I kind of debrief them and give them my thoughts, what worked particularly well and what we might want to work on and so forth. It was interesting because as we got ready for today's presentation, a couple of us advisors were talking, and I mentioned that I do this. And one advisor said, oh, I don't do this. It makes my students so nervous. And I just I thought that was interesting because we've each found what works for us and for our students, and um, there's enough flexibility in the program that we can really do what works for us as individuals as well. Um, <clears throat> okay, so... Our next slide, in addition to our conference evaluations, we also, and this is an attachment as well that's uploaded, we also ask the student to review their semester work. And the first of these reviews occurs in December and is called the Semester in Review, a very original title. Uh, the December review asks questions about how the student perceives their progress thus far in the year. For example, we ask them to consider how their studying has changed since the beginning of the year as well as asking them to consider which study strategies are working, as well as those perhaps that are not. We, can, we furthermore ask the students um, their, about their greatest challenges, which areas were the best areas of improvement, and to consider which changes they might want to make in the future. But once again, I think the whole uh, outcome of advisory is that we really want the student to be an active participant in their own learning, where it's not just simply teacher-directed. Our May questionnaire, which is, once again, very originally titled, entitled The Year in Review, is quite similar, but requires the student to take a broader and, and perhaps more comprehensive look at the entire year. And I think my favorite part of, um, is where the student is asked to look forward after they've reviewed the past year, um, look forward in their life to their life in the fall, which will be either as a new eighth grader, which at our school is top dog, um, or as a new freshman in high school with the attendant responsibilities and excitements um, for that new experience. So that's always an interesting part. We believe um, as we're trying to show that there are many, many benefits from our advisory program, and many of these benefits we just can't quantify. Certainly one benefit is observing the interaction between parent and child, and I think any educator understands that right there. <laughs> Quite honestly, this is one substantial benefit to the conference process, being able to observe the level of discourse between the two parties. So we found if you have a particularly anxious child, for example, it's really interesting and helpful to watch how the parent handles this and whether the student's anxiety is either calmed or heightened by the interaction with the parent. And then following that exchange, as we have the student in our classroom, it's, it's just um, gives me a greater insight into how to talk to the student, um, whether I need to provide more motivation or if just a couple of words are going to be enough for this, for this student. So really, again, the benefits to the program are just too numerous to count. We've also found this concept of mutual understanding a great outcome of the process. And often parents have no idea about the amount of homework and or stress the student is really under until the conference. This is a time during the conference where the parent can can hear, can really hear what their student's life is like in junior high. And oftentimes there are truly heartwarming exchanges that occur because of these revelations. And honestly, there have been a couple of very difficult situations between parents and children. Um, but once again, these just can provide great insight. Um, but on the positive side, many times the parents are able to express pride and pleasure in their students' accomplishments that they really may have not been able to do without this insight. Now, we have two videos uh, that substantiate what we're trying to convey. And the first of the videos is from the parent's perspective, and the second is from the child's. Um, but if you could please play the video entitled, The Parents. I think the first time we went in, um, just to have to watch your child present their grades to you and to um, talk about their goals, their um, areas that they maybe struggle a little bit in, their strengths, their weaknesses, um, to have your child be able to identify that and to present that to you is, um, it's a, I think that's a life skill that they learn and that they have to um, identify their, like their strengths, their weaknesses, talk about their goals and 
going forward, whether they're um, in, in high school, in college, in job interviews, I mean, that, that's something that they're going to have to do. They're going to have to be able to present themselves. Uh, our daughter had to take a personal inventory of her performance, and she had to tell us about um, what her skills were, what maybe some of her shortcomings were, and what the positive uh, things she had achieved were. So she had to do that all herself, look at all of her grades, look at all of her work, show us some examples, and then present that to us rather than, and, and in the presence of her homeroom teacher. So with that environment, she's able to really identify some goals and objectives and some achievements and uh, in order to do better in the coming quarter. Um, next, we have uh, the daughter's perspective, the daughter giving her perspective in which she cites very similar benefits. Could you please play the next video entitled, The Student? I think that the first time I had to present my grades and assignments to my parents, I was really nervous and um, I kind of wasn't really used to having to sit there and, you know, formally tell them what are my goals, what my grades have been like this quarter, what I need to work on, and what my strengths are. Um, and having to work on that really makes you kind of get to know yourself better academically and what um, your strengths and weaknesses are and what you need to work on to make yourself a better student. And by the end of eighth grade, I know I was a lot more confident in being able to talk to my parents about um, how I was doing and um, being able to kind of own up to the things that I need to work on but also tell them what I'm doing well at and I know I had um, really improved and being able to, ha to have that conference with my parents. Okay. As is sometimes the case, we as advisors are able to hear things from parents and families that we may not have otherwise been privy to. I think I mentioned that earlier. Um, and often these are really important uh, family matters that maybe just due, due to time constraints we would not have been made aware of. But the conference is such a great time to just um, be one-on-one -on -one with a parent and a child. A final benefit of conferencing is that students can hear about the, uh, pardon me, that parents can hear about the difficulties and successes in their students' lives as the child lays out their work and academic performance before them. Once again, we're often witness to these special moments and honestly occasionally very difficult moments as parents and child interact. In summary, we hope that we've shared why we took the time, and it was a great deal of time, to research and then finally implement our program, which we do find to still be a work in progress. I think we'd all agree. There's not a year that has passed where we haven't made substantial changes to our program, and I think that we would all agree that every year is better than the last, and we as advisors get better, too, as we progress. We'd like to thank you for joining us today, and if you have any questions, we would be more than happy to field them. Thank you.